There was a lot happening in the 80s, uh, perhaps more than younger composers now realise. Uh, we had 20th century festivals both in Dublin and Belfast and uh, significant composers like uh, Karl Heinz Stockhausen and Elliot Carter visited Dublin and Belfast during that era. Uh, we also had of course uh, Concord Ensemble with Jane O'Leary who are still going strong after all these years. Uh, since then we've uh, had a lot more ensembles, of course we have a lot more composers as well, so there's more demand for specialist groups that can play this repertoire. Well, among the things that have become easier, it has to be said, uh, is Estona. And that's one of the innovations in Ireland that other artists uh, can envy us for, um, from other countries. The artists on there uh, are entitled to a stipend which can substantially help their concentration on producing their own work without too many outside diversions. There are 20 or 25 composers, I'm not sure of the exact number, on East Donna, considerable number. So there's that. Uh, probably more difficult, I think, for young composers especially is there's a lot more noise in the atmosphere, I think. A composer was still a comparative rarity in Ireland in the 1980s. You had rarity value. There's less of that now, and probably everybody has to shout a bit more to be heard. Well, the internet for all composers, I mean, all over the world, has been a game changer, really. Because everyone, for example, used to be dependent on a contract with a publisher to, I mean, someone told me dogmatically in about 1990, if you don't have a publisher, you don't have a career in composition. That's not really the case anymore. Uh, individual composers can do this more effectively than many publishing houses can do it for them. And that has also been uh, a big change in the general, uh, the general atmosphere. Indeed, that is uh, true. You can access anything on the internet. There's a downside to everything, Linda, because I find now that young composers, they often have less thoroughgoing knowledge of the repertoire than my generation did. And I was talking to one of them about this recently, and I said, it seems amazing when it's all at the click of a button that you can do that. And he said to me, it's because it's all at the click of a button that we are often not so knowledgeable that it's so permanently there and so easily there that a lot of the time you don't bother looking at it. Yeah, there's so no there's a danger in that, you know. My theory on this, I'll give the edited version of it, um, is that a century ago the Scandinavians got Sibelius, uh, the Irish got Yeats, and that's good, but it was not altogether favourable for the development of music in Ireland. When you produce figures of that calibre in very small cultures, the knock-on effect is very, very considerable. Yeats didn't like music, and one of his essays refers to it as the enemy. And, you know, I'm afraid that that philistinism, for want of a better word, has uh, persisted even to this day in Irish culture. But it's a long time ago now, and it is changing and the atmosphere in some ways is a lot more positive. 
It is a good thing. And I mean, pop music as well, which in the modern sense, Beethoven or Brahms did not have to compete with. Yeah. yeah. So it's a noisier atmosphere. And to that extent, it's more difficult for composers. But with persistence, you can make a noise uh, of your own. But I think that the persistence is the key thing. Thank <laughs> you.